Thanks. Um, this is JMU Scoop, a PWA to promote ride sharing at JMU by uh, Brenna Ellison, Cole Gerhardt, Hannah Walsh, and Luke Wilburn. As you mentioned, we are the JMU Scoop team, and here's a overview of our presentation. We're first going to start off by talking about the parking problem that we have on JMU's campus, and then we're going to move into the impacts of this problem, such as cultural dynamics, public policy, and, and environmental impacts. Then we're going to move in on to how we created the app and do a short demo. And then finally, we're going to conclude with our uh, challenges and future recommendations. So the problem that we're trying to address with our app is the parking and traffic problem at JMU. Um, I'm sure if you guys commute to campus, you probably share similar experiences as with us. Um, for example, I bus to campus. I always have ever since sophomore year when I start to live off campus. However, there are some limitations with taking the bus. For example, um, times can be inconvenient um, or not really line up with class times and cause me to wait around a lot. Or if I miss the bus, there's a pretty slim chance I'll actually show up to class because I'll just be so late. Um, but I've never really considered taking um, or getting a parking pass and driving my own car because of the cost of purchasing the parking pass, gas, and the parking is just a nuisance to find. And I bike to campus a lot, and I love it, but it comes with its own disadvantages. Uh, for one, it can be inconvenient. Uh, over the winter, it was just too cold sometimes, or it was snowy or raining or something. Uh, we also have a really long campus which a lot with a lot of hills in between, uh, which can make it pretty tough. Um, it can also be kind of dangerous with a lot of college drivers and uh, high traffic areas. So both me and Hannah drive to class. Um, and not only is it expensive, but it's also a gamble to get a spot. Um, during prime time hours, it's a race to get a spot. You know, people are following people back to their cars. Um, they're parking at Walmart and other places and they tow. Um, and it's, it's a problem that needs to be solved. And if we look at the next slide, so you can see the red X's are the construction. Um, and those lots are currently not available. So of the five and a half thousand spots that are available, minus these, you have about 9,000 commuter parking passes sold. Um, so, you know, it's a problem that needs to be addressed. Um, and we think this is the way to do it. So parking at JMU has had a long history of issues, um, at least since 1977, where a JMU Breeze article mentioned that parking was just horrendous and it was made worse by too many parking passes sold and not enough spaces on campus, kind of like what Cole just said recently with construction, we're losing pass, uh, spots, but we have so many people with passes out there. Um, currently the parking pass costs $272 for the entire year and there's been a trend of it increasing each year due to increased demand. There has, have been talks about incentivizing alternative modes of transportation, for example, setting up a bike program where the school would give out bike equipment or setting up HOV and carpool priority spots. However, both those were not implemented. Um, there's also been some capstones that tried to address the problem of traffic and parking at JMU. For example, a parking app was made and it was a success. However, that doesn't address the parking problem at its core. Um, outside of the JMU community, there are ride sharing apps such as Zimride, RideJoy, and Blah Blah Car. Zimride is made by Enterprise. Um, they had issues getting customers and retaining customers. So eventually they moved on and created Lyft and they had success obviously with that on-demand car service. RideJoy had a similar experience at Zimride where they couldn't get customers or retain them so they ultimately just quit being in the ride sharing market. Blah Blah Car is a European ride sharing app and they've had a lot of excess in Europe. So why is there a difference between European ride sharing apps and American ride sharing apps? Many people think it's because the cost of a car and gas in the US is much cheaper than it is in Europe. In addition, they think that Americans aren't as open to riding with strangers as Europeans are. Um, however, we're college students we're cheap, we're broke, and we might be a little more open to riding with strangers as we're in one community, so maybe we have more um, of a niche here. Uh, lastly, the current solution that we have in place is constant road and parking expansion. However, that's only a short-term solution. 
Um, John Sturman, a systems thinker and modeler, described this. So as traffic increases, the expan um, more expansion projects will occur. And for a short period of time, traffic flow will increase. So you'll have an easier time of getting from point A to B. However, eventually, people will begin to take longer trips, more frequent trips, might take that trip to the store that you didn't take before, and traffic, traffic will begin to increase again. Uh, with public policy, the main thing to look at is the Clean Air Act, which regulates the amount of emissions from automobiles. And in keeping with this act and others like it, um, we wanted to uh, try to reduce our emissions by reducing high traffic areas and single person driving like Brenna was talking about. Um, JMU also has some of its own policies, as we've talked about with parking. Even if you have a parking pass, it's limited, and there are gates up all around campus for security, but that prevents people from dropping people off on campus and increases traffic uh, around the circumference. Uh, for the cultural dynamics, um, the main thing to point out is that, as Brent was talking about a little bit, is that we're all college students, so we're all kind of in the same boat. And as a people group, we tend to highly value convenience over anything else. So we'll buy that expensive parking pass, we'll drive our single drive car and uh, wait that really long time for a parking spot. Um, we also tend to avoid interacting with strangers. Uh, as you see in this picture here, you can kind of see that as a common sight throughout JMU's campus. However, this plays to our app's advantage as it allows people to connect online as most people are kind of familiar with with some of the apps out there right now. Um, we also try to create trust with our users um, by keeping a lot of their personal data safe and allow the, me the um, messaging system inside our app to um, allow a lot of the communication. Some environmental impacts that come from many single passenger cars commuting to campus every day include um, a large amount of CO2 being emitted as well as the implications of construction as a solution that we currently have. So each day we emit about 24,000 pounds of CO2 and we found this number by taking the number of parking passes that were sold this year and multiplying it by the average distance from the Jamie bookstore to off-campus housing which is 1.63 miles. Multiply that by two to get a round trip each day and then multiply that by 368.4 grams of CO2 which EPA, the EPA states as um, what a passenger car typically emits per mile driven and then multiply that by a conversion factor to get from grams to pounds and you get 24,000 pounds of CO2 and that's just each day and to put that into perspective that's about how much one American emits in half a year so that's a very large amount um, in addition so construction as a solution um, it not only makes our campus less attractive as we get rid of green space, but also increases impervious surfaces and increases runoff and pollution. The construction industry is the largest users of energy, materials, water, and emit a lot of pollution. Some of that pollution is debris, sediment, chemical, but also the extraction of those materials used in construction um, emit pollution in itself. Lastly, companies often don't want to deal with these environmental problems that they cause at their sites because it um, leaves them with liabilities, but also um, it cuts back on their profits and extends the time of their project. So here's a comparison of modes of transportation based on reliability and convenience and cost. So Ubering or taxiing to campus obviously is the most expensive but most reliable or convenient since you don't have to deal with finding parking. The bus system or walking is maybe lower convenience or reliability but the cheapest option. Um, carpooling you can see is a little less expensive than driving your personal car but <coughs> um, more convenient or reliable because we're hoping if more people tend to carpool at JMU then we're hoping there will be more um, available spots on campus and less time take, um, taken to find spots. Um, biking is somewhere in the middle, as you can see. So here we're comparing time, cost, and environmental impacts of each mode of transportation. Walking, taking the bus, or biking takes the longest, but is the cheapest and emits the lowest amount of CO2. Um, taxiing, as I said, was the most expensive and probably out of any college student's budget to spend nearly $2,500 a year. 
Um, it also emits the most CO2 per year. Comparing the personal car and carpooling, um, you have similar times. Carpooling might be a little longer because you have to pick up your passenger, drop them off. You still have to account for the time to park. However, with carpooling, your costs and your environmental impact can decrease by four. This is assuming that you're going to have four passengers, so this would be the smallest cost and the least amount of environmental impact. However, um, our app doesn't include a payment system that's totally up to the passengers and um, drivers, so that's not necessarily going to happen, but we'd hope people would chip in. Um, and all these values were calculated using the distance from the Jamie Bookstore to Southview Apartments because it's 1.8 miles, which is similar to the average distance from off-campus housing to the Jamie Bookstore, which is 1.63 miles. Right, and so one of the things we wanted to do is show you the value that our app might <coughs> contribute for uh, JMU's campus. And to do that, uh, we provide this kind of example of a solution. So assuming there are roughly 15,000 commuters at JMU, uh, and we differentiate between in-state and out-of-state for cost, we're assuming that each commuter missed two classes per semester due to maybe it was raining and they didn't want to walk all the way to the bus stop or they didn't want to walk to campus or bike to campus, or they just knew parking was going to be terrible, they were a little bit late already. Whatever it was, uh, they missed two classes. Uh, and so for in-state and out-of-state, two classes times the cost um, and the number of classes, we get total losses of $2 million per semester based on missed class. Uh, however, with JMU Scoop, we're assuming only a 10%, which is the na national average of people who carpool, as commuting, uh, so that's 1,500 JMU commuters. Uh, with the same calculation, uh, our app could save up to $200,000. So our journey began when this parking problem became into an idea. This idea was created by a group of students in 2016 as they wanted to create a mobile app for JMU students to carpool to and from campus. Um, this team has graduated and we were passed on this project and we made it our goal to uphold their mission statement. And the mission statement states, to create a mobile application for JMU student commuters to coordinate carpools. Overall goals include reducing time and traffic, increasing availability of parking, increasing convenience of commute, saving money, reducing individual drivers on the road, and making a positive environmental impact. So now that we've talked about the mission statement, we're gonna get into the technical side of the app. So this app is a PWA, which means it's a progressive web app. A progressive web app is a website that has an app-like structure and experience for the user. So um, this is different from any other app that you would have on your phone because you don't have to download it from iTunes or Google Play. You um, can take it as a shortcut from the website and add it to your home screen, which we'll show you how to do um, in the demo. Next, uh, this doesn't require automatic updating. Like Facebook requires you, I think, at least twice a month to update, but this is all automatic, so you don't have to do anything. And finally, a PWA, PWA works on any device, such as a computer, an iOS device, or Android. Uh, we didn't have to design this app specific to any uh, device. So we used a couple different tools for this project. Um, Ionic was the application components, so this is what the user sees, if, like the menu, the buttons, and pictures, and we type this in HTML and CSS. And Angular is the application framework, we used uh, TypeScript for this. And finally, Auth0 is the authentication system, so this is how a user logs in. So we have it set up so that you have to have a JMU Dukes email address because we didn't want any other random people joining in on this app. And uh, you s type in your email, create a password, and then you'll get a confirmation email that you are all signed up. And to put all these tools into perspective, we can think of them as a house. So Ionic can be thought of the decor inside of a house and Angular is the wiring and piping, and Auth0 is our security system. Uh, for the back end, it's pretty simple. We use Feathers.js as our API to facilitate communication between front end and back end. Uh, and then the back end database was MongoDB, which is where we stored all the information for rides and users and such. 
Uh, so the way that all of this worked together was uh, a user would interact with the Ionic front end that we created. Um, and so whether they're posting a ride or querying a ride, uh, Feathers.js would either pull or input that, data, that information into the database, uh, and then it could be pulled back upon a query. So now we have a demo. So this is the home screen of Jamie's scoop. I obviously typed in the web address and we're going to save this as a shortcut by touching the bottom button to save and add to home screen. And we can name it whatever we want. I'm gonna name it JMU Scoop. And click add. And that adds it to my app screen. So I can simply access it by clicking it from the home page and here it is. So we're gonna log in. I've already logged in before and have an account, so it already recognizes me. But if you are new to this app, you would type in your JMU Duke's email and create a password and log in that way. So now I'm logged in. We can go to my profile page and we can see that I have a picture and I have contact information for my group me name. We didn't want to give out cell phone numbers for privacy issues. So we thought group me was the best way to communicate with someone. Next, we have my car information. As you can see, I have a blue Toyota Camry and I have four seats available. So if I wanted to post a ride, I click on post a ride. Departure date is April 20th at 1 p.m. And we're leaving from Copper Beach and we are going to the quad. And we have four seats available. So we're gonna post this and we have successfully posted my ride. Now, say I need to get a ride to campus. I'm gonna hit, I need a ride and enter my search criteria. And we are going to also be leaving on April 20th. At 1 p.m. And we are coming from Aspen Heights and we are going to East Campus. So when we search, we see that we have one match. Cole is riding to Aspen Heights to East Campus at 1 p.m. on April 20th, which is perfect. This is what we were looking for. So we're gonna join this ride. And we can see that we have successfully joined. Now, if we wanna view what we've posted or what we've joined, we can hit My Carpools. And we can see that the driving page shows the rides that I posted and we can see Brenna and Luke have joined this ride since I posted it. And if I hit riding, we can see that I have joined Cole's ride. Now to log out, we simply go to home and hit log out and that's it. Okay, so we each had to overcome a few challenges while making this app. Um, and I know most of us have taken basic programming classes, but I was only familiar with Python. Um, and this used TypeScript, CSS, and HTML, which were all completely new to me and my group members. Uh, we had to learn about APIs and how they communicate with databases. And we had to uh, bear with the changes in Angular and Auth0 since last year. We couldn't get them to work right and eventually just had to start from scratch. So we had a couple ideas for the future. Um, we didn't have time to implement them. One would be uh, an app messaging system. Uh, as Hannah said earlier, you know we, we listed the GroupMe, uh, GroupMe handles, and that's I guess that's a way to communicate, but I guess not everybody has a GroupMe. So an in-app messaging system would you know, preserve privacy while also being convenient. Um, and we're not passing this project on to another capstone class next year, 
but uh, students have individually come up to Dr. Benton with an idea of creating a ride sharing app of their own. Um, and we were debating giving them our code and maybe giving them a jump start. So we would like to thank Dr. Benton for all his hard work these past two years. He's been such a great help to this team. But um, yeah, and we'd like to open up for questions now. Yeah. Do you think those individuals that are interested in doing this, do you think they'll be able to take that app a little bit further and make it so that it'll be something that the Chinese students would use? Or, or do you see other obstacles that might be in the way preventing yeah. a lot of for sure. I mean, we've talked about, like, how are we going to get students to use this app? Like, why is someone going to want to go out of their way to pick somebody up uh, and go to campus? So we thought about maybe seeing if they could get some HOV lanes for people who use this app or having, like, events where the first, like, 50 people who join the app could um, be entered in for, like, a $5 Starbucks card. So. That was one of our biggest challenges, is trying to figure out how we're gonna get people to use this app, as it is inconvenient for someone to go out of their way to pick someone up. But I think with time and effort, if another group of students were to pick up this project, that they would hopefully be able to figure out a way for people to want to use this app and you know help the environment and help reduce the parking problem. So hopefully in the future, we can have a group of students that successfully uh, use this app and see a difference in the parking. Also, I think if we were to add a messaging system and if they were to able to implement a way to facilitate payments, um, they would have an incentive to pick up other people because it would drive down their costs. So can drivers with this app get, get paid? Not in the app, but that's why we have the messaging system. Oh, so then they could just communicate with hey, five bucks for this. Yeah, yeah. Right. And we had also talked about maybe even incorporating Venmo into that. If say if a driver wants like five bucks a week, if you take them every day, we could say, Hey, like, I'm gonna Venmo request you five dollars if I drive you to campus for this week. Right. So that was also discussed. I think that might help it, right? Right, yeah. And what we've seen is bus ridership has dropped something like twenty percent recently. And it's pretty much since we've seen Uber uh, you know, becoming more prominent here in Harrison, but the students are willing to pay money, right? Instead of right. riding a bus, it's free, right? But your challenge would be to get drivers that are willing to do it unless they're receiving money. I think our students have the money and are willing to pay for the comedians, right? But why would you drive if you didn't get compensated for it when you could just drive yourself, park as it is, right? You, you're already covered. So it's like additional effort for no additional reward uh, unless they get some. Right. I think you'd get a lot of people in on it if you had like maybe a part of the app for money and I guess like less than three dollars so it's like cheaper than any other option and I think I mean I, I would be willing to give it a couple few people if I was getting like a dollar or two out of it right. so yeah, that'd be a whole nother problem statement for the next group yeah it would be interesting any other questions Cool. All right, thank you guys for coming.